Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're looking at Warhammer Monthly. This was this is number one. This was a British comic. It was two pounds in the UK and two ninety five dollars in the United States. This is an anthology series. It was created by uh, GMC Workshop. This is their Black Library comic book pub uh, book publishing. They did books and comics. This is an anthology, and it has uh, four stories inside. Let's take a look at the inside. Okay, here's the Indicia. Uh, storming issue number one, March 1998, by Games Workshop. So this, you know, if you played Warhammer, either the miniatures games or, or the role-playing games, this was official Warhammer, like, lore and stuff like that. Next issue was Titan. So th th uh, th this is four stars. Dark Blade, Mighty Dark Elf Lord, Malice Dark Blade, Predator and Prey, The Fate of Kaladin Hangs in the Balance, Cal Jericho, Bounty Hunter by Trade, Blood Quest, Captain Leonatos, Fallen Angel of the Blood Angels, and then win contests, stuff like that. Um, full disclosure, I never played Warhammer. I never played the role-playing game, nor did I ever play the miniatures game. When I uh, I went to school out in New Mexico, and my roommates, I had a, a big old house that we that we rented, and uh, they were all into Warhammer. They were either painting miniatures or, or playing the game, and that dining room table was just covered with Warhammer stuff, and they, they would play all the time, but I, I just too broke to play. And one of my roommates gave me the first 25 issues of this series. So I I, I never bought them. And of course I read them because I got to read every comic book I have. And I, I got to say, I like it. So all my knowledge of Warhammer comes from watching them play and these comics. So there you go, all right? Uh, this is by Dan Abnett, who I really, really enjoy. I think he's a phenomenal comic book writer. And art by Kev Hopgood. I don't know anything about him, but look at this art. Oh, I wanted to say something about the cover art. That's a pretty cool cover. Uh, all right, you know, look at that. <coughs> I, I don't know the Warhammer lore, and it's been a while since I read this, so I, I think, what's he, a blood angel, I guess? But uh, look at the art. I think that the coloring is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for this. You know, if you if this was to be a black and light white, I think you'd see the limitations. But that's all I want to say, something mean, I guess. But look at this. This art is excellent. You know, just excellent. <laughs> this is... Uh, the Mighty Dark Elf Lord Malice Dark Blade. Kind of reminds me of our Zelda's And it's been probably since 1998 since I read this. So I don't even pretend to remember anything. But I just wanted to showcase that this comic exists and give you a, a little taste. But this is the fantasy. So this is like a Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, not the futuristic. I'm more familiar with the futuristic. That, that's what my roommates played. Fourth, or Warhammer 40k, I think it was called. And... Uh, but they also had like the traditional Dungeons Dragons type story. And they're the same universe, just separated by millennia of, of, of time. And it, I always thought it was just like a dark, uh, interesting universe. <coughs> Pardon my cough. And uh, I, 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 got, I should get more into the I have a couple of board games, Warhammer type board games. But I, I do not claim to be an expert in the slides. But I do like this moody, dark. I think the black and white works really well for this, this story. You know, dark elf. And here he is. I have cursed you, Miles Darkblade. I have cursed you. You know, he's getting the MacGuffin object. Just, I just think it's so cool. That, you know, again, uh, I got into fantasy comic books in the, within like the past few years. So I just read this because it was, it was handed to me for free. But, uh, I think rereading it now would be something I really like now that I'm more into this stuff. And here's the second story. This is written by Gordon Rennie and art by David Poog, whom I know nothing about. These are all British creators. And I, th again, this is set in the... Uh, this is set in the... Uh, no, no, they got guns, stuff like that. So this is supposed to be Warhammer 40,000. I, I wasn't a fan of this art. As you can see, a lot of dialogue. Look at all this dialogue. The The previous story had better art. No, it's dead, Abnett. it? Uh, he, he, he wrote a lot of Legion of Superheroes comics. He, came, he did some Batman, and he did a, a series that I really like called Resurrection Man. Here we have some, like, Cthulhu demon. But I find this art to be busy. Like, can you separate this? Like, I think this would really better, be beneficial, be benefited by coloring. But I, I can't tell what's going on, so... If, if the art is like distracting me like this, I, I, I don't even remember the story. See, here we got some spaceships and with some actual artwork that's cool uh, by the Emperor, you know, the God King. I remember my roommates used to say the God Emperor, the God Emperor, Cal Jericho, the hit. So, this is Warhammer uh, 40k. You know, they got the spaceships and laser guns and pistols, stuff like that. This art, I really like. Oh, who, who's the creator? Uh, 
story, Gordon Rennie, same guy, Carl Kopinski, and letters, Dave Poog. I know Carl Kopinski, he, he did a, a couple art designs for uh, for Simon game zombie side so I, I i'm more familiar with him but this art is uh light years above the uh, the second story i like the first story art the best but this this would also benefit from, from uh, colors but uh here, here you can subscribe additional this okay i'll talk more about the comic at the end okay this to me was my favorite okay this is gordon rennie art by colin mcneil letters by tony luke this is traditional comic book art very clean i mean it would be better with, with colors but then again except for the first story i think benefited from black and white the best this would this they, they all would but this is okay this this is just clean artwork i, I could tell it's going on panel progression and a lot of lot of dialogue a lot of dialogue because the, the warhammer universe is is filled with lore we've got some orcs over here we got the uh, the blood angels I, I, I always see them with these weapons. That, look at that! Look at that! It's so cool. And I, again, I, I'm not I'm not your Warhammer guy, but I just I had to showcase this comic because uh, okay, I'll talk more about it. Is Warhammer num monthly number two? And this Titan story, this Titan story, I remember the most. It was a uh, a guy who took over uh, like a big gigantic Titan titan mech and he, he plugged himself in because the the original pilot got wounded or got killed and he plugged himself in against the, the the sergeant told him not to and he bonded with it and he ended up winning the war and he was brought up before like a, a religious group and they they told him that he was chosen by the by the the titan so you 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 know but he he's like he should be executed he, he ignored a direct order he goes no the titan mech bond supersedes all orders and your your order was sacrilegious to even tell him not to bond with something that he was destined to bond to. I thought it was a cool story. Okay, now let's talk about this comic itself. It lasted 86 issues. It's from Britain, so it is really tough to get here in the, in the States. You can get collected editions in the States, and uh, that's probably cheaper because I was just looking up prices of this because I wanted to get past 25. I got 1 to 25. It goes up to 86. And the only way I could get them is like eBay, like $5 a comic and $5 shipping a comic. So it's $10 a comic. I, I don't think I'm going to be doing that to uh, fill in my collection. because If they were cheaper or if there was a full run or something like that, I would do that. But you could get collected editions. You could go to GMC, the Black Library, in their website and get like get the, the story of Titan. I thought that was, that was the best. I really, really, really enjoyed that. Um, it, it was a mixed bag. Uh, just you could see the different styles of art just in this particular comic, the different writing styles. Uh, then you have the fantasy, then you have the the, the, the futuristic sci-fi. You know, so each issue was completely different. You know, the lore the same, the the the, the settings the same. The two settings to choose from, but you had different arts artists, you had different writers, different characters. So some of them I really liked, some of them were forgettable, and. Uh, but, but overall, it was it was really worth it. I mean, granted, I, I got the whole series, for, well, I got the first 25 issues for free. So, of course, it was worth it to me. <coughs> I, I, I just had this cough that I just can't get rid of. It's because I work outside in, you know, in construction by traffic. I'm always breathing in fumes. But anyway, let's get back to this. Um, you had some real quality writers like Dan Abnett, who, who ended up being like one of the more consistent writers, stayed with us. And even after it got canceled, he was hired to... Uh, to do, uh, I just forget, but there was a, a Warhammer comic after this that was Warhammer uh, Archive after this, and he, he was hired to do that. Anyway, now I'm starting to ramble, but this is Warhammer Monthly. It was a British comic. It won the Eagle Award in, in 2009, or 2006, rather, and it, it deserved it. It was really, really good. Uh, some issues completely forgettable some issues phenomenal i'll never forget them you know it's been 24 years since i read these and i still remember the stories um some of them i ripped off from my dungeon dragons campaigns i'm you know we all if you have a dm you, you're always stealing ideas from other people um and there you go i could ramble on now for the rest of, rest of the another hour or so but i will i'll cut it short now this Mo warhammer monthly issue number one by gmc the, the, the company itself and black hat uh black library they made novels they made they made comic book you know they made prose novels they made graphic novels and they made comic books okay all right see you tomorrow with another video bye bye